that people want to have a nice home and a nice community. They want a very controlled environment. And if this time, you know, in this period of time in which your home is your major asset, you can understand that people are worried about their housing values, their property values falling. Again, the problem is that initially there is a premium for buying a house in a gated community. You probably see that here, even in Canada, that you pay. In fact, Jill Grant mentions that but it doesn't hold. What happens is the infrastructure of the gated community begins to deteriorate and the costs increase, which is the economics of it. Short term, it's a good deal for a municipality to have private communities and gated communities being one. The developer puts in everything. You don't have to take care of it. The community pays homeowner fees. They pick up their own trash. They maintain their own roads. They maintain their own lights. That's great. So you get you know new taxpayers at no cost. On the other hand, what happens is when we look at places that are about 20 years old, in which in a lot of places now we have in California, uh, Florida, Arizona, you're beginning to see lots of gated communities deteriorating. They can no longer uh, support, those, those few people can no longer support that infrastructure. And they then turn it back to the public sector and say, hey, municipality, take over our roads, take over everything. And then you end up being stuck with it anyhow. So you lose in the beginning, the taxpayer loses in the beginning because usually there's some deal made with the township or with the municipality or I don't know exactly the units of government that you have here um, that they can build higher density or that they pay uh, the community or they're allowed to provide amenities but those amenities aren't used by the public uh, because they can't get in and then the taxpayer pays again when it goes back to uh, the municipality.